Sweetie, sweetie, please tell me a little bit more about dipole-dipole interactions. It really would warm my heart if you would tell me a little bit more. Said no one ever. Unless you're talking about hydrogen bonding, because everybody wants to know about hydrogen bonding. And for a good reason, because it is all present and all important. If you understand the concept, you pretty much have 10% of all applied chemistry nailed down. I'm pretty sure if you go and take a piss, it has something to do with it, with hydrogen bonds. So this is going to be me explaining this concept to the best of my abilities. But yeah, hydrogen bonds are a subclass of dipole-dipole interactions and I am going to explain dipoles first and then I'm gonna dive into hydrogen bonds. So dipoles are molecules or pieces of large molecules that have a partially positive and a partially negative charge. If you have a hard time visualizing this, try to visualize two guys playing tug of war and one of them is stronger than the other but only slightly and that means he will pull the flag a little bit closer to him but he is not strong enough to get it all the way through. So the flag is stuck somewhere in the middle slightly more on the side of the stronger guy and instead of the flag you have electrons. The attraction happens when a partially positive charge finds a partially negative charge. Because this is not a complete transfer of electrons like in the ionic bond, which I have covered last time, so make sure you check it out, it makes dipole-dipole interaction slightly weaker. And then hydrogen bond entered the conversation and pfft, Everybody lost their mind. What is so different about a hydrogen bond? It has a hydrogen atom. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, it might not sound that special, but when it's connected to an oxygen or a nitrogen atom, it makes all the difference in the world. There is also an example of hydrogen fluoride, but that's in organic chemistry, and frankly, now I don't care about that one. Why do people care about this so much? We'll know that when a hydrogen connects to an oxygen or a nitrogen, it gives hydroxyl and amino groups, and those are present in many biomolecules, including carbohydrates and proteins. And those are the building blocks of our cells and our cell membranes. Proteins are receptors on the cell, and drugs target those receptors when they want to exhibit their effects. And drugs bind to the receptor through these hydrogen bonds, which it makes them extremely important. The partially positive charge is always carried by the hydrogen atom, and the partially negative charge is always carried by the oxygen or the nitrogen. And that's why the hydrogen atom is called the hydrogen bond donor and oxygen and nitrogen are called hydrogen bond acceptors and go figure the donor group always has to have a hydrogen the acceptor does not which means that groups like the keto group or a tertiary nitrogen can also be hydrogen bond acceptors also, if it wasn't for hydrogen bonds, water would be a gas, not a liquid. A textbook example of this is when you compare the water molecule to hydrogen sulfide, or also known as that smell that you get when your egg rottens. Also slightly important is the fact that hydrogen bonds keep the nucleic acid chains together. Yeah. Slightly important. Before I end the video, I would like to thank you people for the support you have shown to this channel. I mean, right now I'm feeling like I'm making a difference in the lives of 20 people, which is amazing. Which is wicked awesome. <laughs> and in the future, I hope I will justify your support and make sure to write in the comment section if you would like to see me do a video of some sorts. 
if you think that I can do some things better, then also do share that in the comment section. And if not, then make sure you hit the like button and share the fun with your friends. And I will see you in the next video.